Pixinsight is great for processing, but the longer, the more I only use Pixinsight for the linear stage, for the stretching, and then I move over quite quickly to Luminar Neo. And so I thought it would be good to do a dedicated tutorial what I'm actually doing in Luminar Neo based on this object, the Crab Nebula, Messier 1, so that you get an idea if that would be also an option for you or if you already own Luminar Neo to see what I'm actually doing, which processes I like to use. Hey, this is Fiend the Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüß Sie miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So first of all, why do I use Luminar Neo? Is this a sponsored, advertised video? And the answer is kind of yes and no. <laughs> so Luminar Neo came, I think it's already about two years ago. They actually approached me if I would like to review their application. And I was actually first quite hesitant. And then I said, let me play around with it and I tried it out. I found some processes which I liked for astrophotography. I found a lot of options which I liked for regular photography, but that's not about this tutorial here. Um, I did then, I think, one or two tutorials or presentations of Luminar Neo, but in the first instance, I was not completely sold. And I think it really needed these two years where I slowly started to discover how to use it effectively. Now, how is it compared to Photoshop, which would be a logical competition? And the only thing that I can say is that Photoshop was always too complicated for me. I never really got warm. I always felt kind of overwhelmed, to be quite honest. And with Luminar Neo, I feel it makes sense. It, it's so easy to use. And I always have this dream to have a Pix inside with the UI of Luminar Neo. That would be my dream. And so that's probably foremost why I love using Luminar Neo. Not so much that it would be better than Photoshop, definitely not but it's just so much easier, so much more intuitive to use. If after this video you would feel that Luminar Neo might be an option for you, that you want to check it out, they have recently added some great new features and at the moment, around the Black Friday period, I think until the 2nd of December, something like that, they have a huge sale with 77% off or something like that. Um, you find the link in the description below. But with that, let's go to the Crab Nebula. And I find this an interesting object because depending on what telescope you shoot it on, all these planetary nebulas, they're quite small. And that's one of the big issues because when they're small and you crop it, you lose a lot of resolution. And if you do not have a lot of resolution, it's quite hard for the software then to improve the picture. And so with objects like this, this is already cropped. And then we crop it again, obviously, because it's still too small. I like to upscale it. And also, before we now completely go into this tutorial, just to be clear, this is not Pix Insight. We're not talking here about scientific accuracy. If you start using these tools, you're starting to use AI to a certain extent which means certain structures, whatever might be invented and deviate to a certain degree from reality. And you do this in exchange for a more beautiful picture. This is not like if you would tell ChatGPT to improve it and it just copies an existing structure on top of it or replaces it. But still, it's, it's the same issues you would have when you use something from the Topa suite. So if you want to be 100% accurate, you really should stay within Pixinsight, where each and every process is completely tailored to that need to not invent anything that could not be existing in reality. 
So that's just in all fairness, the disclaimer. Okay, so to actually upscale that, I go now in catalog mode and I throw this down here to upscale. I will upscale it about times four. Now it actually moves it here in the upscale folder. I double click it and move it over to edit. The first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crop it. And I would say I do it about like that, apply. And now we have a nice, big, spectacular nebula. So there's a lot of issues now with this picture. First of all, this is still very blurry and um, we have some weird noise still or patterns or whatever that is in the background. We wanna get rid of that. Just wanna make it a little bit more pop. So let me tell you what not to use. What you should not use is the AI enhance feature. Practically valid for any astrophotography. The reason is this is made for terrestrial photography. So if I go up here, I simply make it brighter, make the background brighter. This is nothing you want. So stay away from that. Also stay away from the two AI features, noiseless and super sharp. Noiseless because it removes the noise much worse than noise exterminator. So do your noise extermination in PixInside with the noise exterminator and leave this where it is. Super sharp is just horrible. If you click on low, almost nothing happens. If you click on middle, it's already way too strong and it leaves terrible artifacts. So stay clear of both of them for astrophotography. So to enhance the details, the two things I like to use is structure. This is AI and I like to use details. If you want to stay away from the AI stuff, only use details. But structure is kind of nice. What I like to do in Luminar Neo is simply try stuff out by going to the maximum, simply to see what it does. And you see how massively it can actually pronounce the structures. We do not want that. So we go back to zero. And now we just move here to about what looks nice, which could be about like this. You can always with the eye toggle. And it's probably still already too strong. As you know, always less is more. But I think that we can risk. Also, what we're going to do, we do not want to actually increase the structure of the noise and so, so we add a mask. That's cool about Luminar Near. You can always do that even afterwards. And it's so easy. Masking, brush. I just take here a brush and I just color the nebulosity. And that's it. And you'll see now we still have the structure change with the nebulosity, but the whole rest stays as it is. I go even still a little bit more down. I think that's good. Okay. Then we do the same with details. Also here we have small details, medium details, and large details, which we can add more contrast. We try it out and then we can add a little bit, always with the eye, check it out. Does it do what you want? Let's do the middle. We're adding a little bit. And also the large, let's see. We really have to be careful here. They react so fast so that we do not overdo that. But I think that's still good. You can always also now go down here to, to this eye and look how does it change overall. Just that we don't over sharpen it. But I think that's still pretty cool. So we leave it like that. The next feature which I really like is landscape which is counterintuitive because again, you would think this is only for terrestrial photography, but it does actually with astrophotography, some pretty cool stuff. So if you look at dehaze and we also look at the most extreme case, it does darken the background and actually add a little bit of nice color to the foreground. So it really helps bring up some contrasts, pronouncing the objects. I really like the dehaze function. And also the golden hour, if you look at it, we go again to the full extent. You see that it actually increases the yellow and reds 
So it really starts glowing. So adding also here a little bit is good. If you look at the difference, it's really helping the picture. So landscape is really one of my secret tips, which I almost always use. The next thing that I use is color. And color is really extremely easy and cool in Luminaire Neo, especially this part here, HSL. So for each of the colors, I can change the hue. For example, if I would not like this red tone, but actually that's good here, I can change the saturation and the luminance. Mostly I play with the saturation. So for example, we want to increase here the red a little bit. We want to definitely increase the blue and perhaps even a little bit the yellow. Can also play with the orange. Let's see now before and after. And that looks much better. Also here I would actually use the mask because I don't want to color the whole picture here. So we go exactly like before. Do the softness a little, little bit away. Okay, now we change the color of the nebulosity, but not of the stars in the background. That's better. Now we can also go into develop. And in develop, we can actually now change the exposure a bit. We can play with the highlights and with the shadows. And with that, we can also darken the background now enough that these patterns, this noise is disappearing. So if we look before and after, that looks much, much better. You also have like in Pix inside the curves. So you could also play with the curves a little bit. I don't feel that's now necessary anymore, but it would be available. Now, if you look where we were and where we are now, it's like day and night. And just with a few options here, we were able to do that. And by the way, if I go to edits, you see here all the functions that I used. And I could now go into each of these functions and still change it. If I, for example, would feel there's a little bit too much structure, I could go in here and actually tone it down. So everything is still changeable. And again, think about what that will mean if PixInsight would work like that. And, and, you, and the brutal part is that this would be feasible in our times. It's not a question of feasibility. It's just a question that the guys of Pix Insight never cared about us as users. And that makes me so upset. This makes me so angry that they only focus on some science stuff they have in mind to cater a few guys at NASA or I don't know, instead of, you know, spending also a few bucks on a UI, a decent UI like this one. But it is what it is. Sorry for the rant. Just a few things which you can also do. The first one is magic light. And I used this already a few times. And you see what's happened if I actually increase the intensity? There's star spikes. There's at the moment on a seven, but I could go now to four that we have the typical Newtonian style. You can actually increase the intensity to a hopefully decent level, the size, the beam width, and so on, until you're happy with how they look like. Also a little bit of glow around if you want. And you could now, if you say, well, these are just these three biggest stars, but I also want to have it on other stars. You just go here on add on the brush size. It should be about the size of the stars. And if I now click in the middle of the star, I also get it. So you could actually do it with how many stars as you want. And especially with a picture with crappy stars like that, it might actually look better afterwards. But again, obviously it's cheating. So you might like that or not might like that, but it is an option. And another really cool thing which they just introduced right now is this light depth. This is an amazing function for landscape photography where you can actually really stage the lighting of a whole landscape picture. It's really amazing, but it's not really intended obviously for astrophotography. But I looked at it and it's 
pretty cool if you're a little bit creative. What we're doing now, we add now some amount. At the moment, it will not look good yet. We go here with the softness way up. We also might a little, add a little bit of warmth. And now I'm actually also masking it. And as you see, it extends now the light a little bit to the outside of the structure, makes it a little bit more even. In this case, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, again, this is creative. So this just some new features. Also, you might play around here with the neo and glow. Obviously not with the neon, but sometimes the glow also depends on the object. Create some great effects. And you see that here with the inner glow, we can also make it nicely glow. So that might be another option instead of the light depth, which I just showed you now. But these are all nice features to actually bring your objects to glow, to pop. You can always, in these cases, also change the hue. So that's quite cool. So with that, we went from this here, this washed out picture, blurry picture, to this here. And again, in this case, I would not do the star spikes. I just wanted to show that to you. But I think if we look at the crab nebula, from my perspective, I really like how it looks now. So I think that really helped this object. So that's already everything for today. As stated, Lunar Neo is something I really use on a regular basis. It's not just something I present to you one time because of somebody asked me to. And uh, nobody asked me actually this time, but I really felt also because some people asked, uh, it would be good to, to give you a tour. And if you want to look at a tutorial where I used Pix Inside and Luminar Neo combined, um, have a look at my Squid Nebula tutorial that I released recently. See you next time and clear skies.